I'm the Arnold. I'm so fly. Mm. <laughs> uh, the reason I like to show a little bit of midsection when I work out is not because I'm trying to walk up in the gym and be like, I'm so fly. Mm. Look at this. Look at all this. No, totally not. Actually, it's the opposite. Um, I like to do this because it's an area that I am really trying to focus on right now. I'm trying to really cinch my waist and it helps me remember if it's exposed to keep it tight the whole time. So even when you're doing like a standing bicep curl, you should be engaging. It's a reminder, I actually picked up this tip from the Arnold. Um, for example, <laughs> I love Arnold Schwarzenegger, so I've read a couple of his autobiographies, and he mentioned in one of them that when his calves were his weakest point, he cut all of his sweatpants and shorts to expose his calves to remind himself, like, hey man, you have puny calves, so maybe work on it a little bit more. So that is the main reason that I like to do this lately. Anyway, that's my little spiel. I actually typed up instructions on this video and then dang Adobe Premiere Pro crashed. So here we are with my first voiceover workout. First we're starting with an incline cable fly and you can't really see but I was trying to incorporate a slow negative so decided to switch the angle. On this one, we are actually varying the start and end positions. This will help hold the tension in the muscle. And honestly, it just helps me keep track of the reps because once I get into high reps, I lose count and I get bored. So here we are. I like to start really narrow, work my way a couple of degrees wider until I make my way back to a regular stance cable fly where your arms are basically going to be parallel to the ground. So here we have an incline static dumbbell press to a standard press. And what that means is we are holding one arm at a 90 degree angle while we push the other one up and then we are bringing them both up to meet each other. This is really challenging for the core and again it's holding the muscle under that tension for the whole time. This one is same thing but different. <laughs> Instead of holding the non-working arm at a 90 degree angle we're actually holding it straight up overhead because it's going to really intensify that core engagement. On this particular one it's a standard press but we are really focusing on a slow negative because the longer you have the muscle under tension the more it has to work the more the muscle fibers will tear and then we build bigger muscles bruh prone to neutral grip you want to make sure in this exercise that you are actually rotating as you push the weight up not at the top with your wrists the second one is just alternating the start and end position so instead we are starting with a neutral grip and ending with prone this is a standard dumbbell press but we are focusing on the stretch so we're not ending at just a 90 degree angle we're actually going a little bit further than 90 degrees here we have a flat bench single dumbbell press to a knee raise so here's where the core engagement really comes in except it's going to be low impact on your low back because we're keeping the knees bent rather than a straight leg and holding the weight overhead is engaging the core and holding the muscle under tension for a longer period of time here we have a dumbbell pullover to a knee raise so you really want to let the weight fall far back behind you so you feel the stretch in your lats and then push it up overhead. Remember to breathe out as you push up with this one and try to pull your belly button in towards your spine as you bring your knees towards your chest. Remember to slowly lower your feet down to the bench. Sometimes I forget to do that. 
<laughs> Here we have a little bit of an easier variation because we're not holding the weight overhead the whole time. to a knee raise to a press and back to a knee raise. So this is double core engagement. And I actually really enjoyed this exercise because like I said, I get bored and it's hard for me to keep count. This one, I just lost count. I just kept going until I couldn't do anymore. Um, but the majority of these exercises, I was doing 15 to 20 reps because like I said, I was trying to keep the weight light. And if 15 to 20 reps still wasn't enough to burn me out, then I would just slow down the negative. Here we have a skull crusher to a knee raise and then a chest press. So with the skull crushers, you want to make sure that you keep your elbows up towards the ceiling as you push the weight back behind your head. Here is a better view of exactly what I need. And I actually remember to slowly lower my feet to the bench this time. <laughs> that is really important because just like with the negatives on the dumbbell presses, you want to keep that core engaged for as long as possible. Skull crusher to a single knee raise. This is going to be a little bit easier on your core for beginners, um, but still you want to focus on keeping it nice and slowly returning your foot to the bench. And holding the weight overhead is still going to engage your core, but also if you're having um, pain or a flare up in your low back, the single knee raise is going to be more beneficial for you. Here we just had a different variation of the single leg. So you're raising both knees at the same time and lowering one at a time. Nice, slow, and controlled. Dumbbell skull crusher on the incline bench. A single arm static skull crusher. That means keeping one arm engaged while the other one is pressing. A wide set dumbbell skull crusher. And here is an easier variation of the wide set just using one dumbbell. Cable tricep push down. I really love this exercise for my triceps because it is one of the few exercises that I can really feel my triceps burning. You just need to make sure that you keep your elbows close to your ribcage the whole time. So the first variation I showed was palms down towards the ground and this one is palms up. So that is prone to supinated grip. Engage your core and remember to breathe out as you push the weight down. Low negative because even after 20 reps, I still wasn't quite feeling it. So I like to, as I said before, slow down the negative. This angle was really just to show you how your elbows should be placed. And also because I took forever braiding my hair and I just wanted to show it. My shoulders were really tired afterwards and it was really a workout in itself. I should have filmed that instead of this. <laughs> a beginner bench tricep dip. A little bit more than beginner level, remember to switch legs. This is a little more intermediate. More difficult intermediate and switch legs. This one is the badass motherfucker tricep dip. These are tough, they engage your core, and of course, switch legs. <laughs> and smile when you're done, because you did it. <laughs> um, 
This workout is gonna be really good for you if you have been experiencing lower back pain because I am right now. <laughs> it's really hard to engage your core and do any kind of core exercises if you're having lower back pain. So I created this workout just for people who have issues with their low back. I hope you enjoy it. Please leave me a comment if you actually tried this workout and let me know what you think. Bye. <laughs>